A big part of enjoying bikes, I think, is appreciating what they look like. Ever since I started riding bikes when I was a kid, I could quite happily sit staring at my bike, just enjoying what it looked like, really. I don't know why that is, but it's just something I've always done. So I've always had an opinion and appreciation for what bikes look like. I guess it's part of the passion of riding a bike. So in this video, I'm going to look through, I think I've got about 30 road bikes to look at that I've collected off the internet. And I'm going to have a look through them, see what I like, what I don't like, and then choose some at the end to be my favourite. I'm going to do it in alphabetical order, uh, starting at the end of the alphabet. And the first one I came to was the Willier, I think that's how you say it, Willier Cento Air Disc, which comes in at five grand. When I first saw this, I can't remember his name, but there's a racer who was using it, might have been in the Giro or something like that. And he had this paint job. I was pretty taken with it. I thought it looked pretty cool. And I think it's pretty cool. Not 100% whether I would buy a paint scheme like that. Maybe it's a bit too bling. So another bike that Willie make that I quite like is the Cento 10 NDR 4200. This is a bit more of an enduro bike. It's got the rubbery flexi bits there. And I quite like the sort of clean modern look that it's got. So yeah, quite like that. Next up, Trek Madone 9.9. I've done a few videos on this one, and though I've ridden one and think it's a great bike, I'm not blown away by its looks, I'll be honest. It's not a big looker for me. Obviously, this one side on photograph isn't particularly fair on it, but I think there's better looking bikes. So next up, Specialized Tarmac Ultralight, nine grand. Well, I've said it before, it's just a good looking bike. It just looks in proportion to me. And I can't think of anything to criticise, really. One thing I guess I might say is the stem. In this day and age, with all the aero stems and the cables being hidden, there's nothing wrong with it, but it just maybe looks a bit old-fashioned now. So maybe that's something that could be updated in the future. And I wonder whether we'll get a disc one soon. So that's the Tarmac. Then we've got the Venge Bias Disc Di2. Another cracking-looking bike. I like the blue colour. Yep, this will definitely be near the top of the list, I think. And I've said it before, the only thing I'm not keen on is this area around here. Next up, the Scott Foil. So this is an interesting one, the Scott Foil. This is the premium disc version. Very expensive, nearly 11 grand. And I kind of like it. I did mess about with a couple of things to see if I could improve the look. I got rid of the cables because cables on aero bikes now are a little bit old fashioned. And I just closed that little gap there. And I think that looks a bit better. What I like about the Scott is it's very tidy here. When you look at an expensive car, you can kind of tell it's expensive just by looking at the gaps between the panels, and they're called shut lines. And generally, the better the car, the more accurate the shut line, and the better the surface continuity between different parts. So that's an, I like that on the Scott. That looks very pro there. Next up, Pinarello Dogma F10 X Lite. Just the frame is over £6,000. That's a lot of money. Now, I'm not a big fan of how this looks. I think this looks like a fancy bike. I can appreciate that. It looks fast. It looks great. And it's obviously got a good pedigree. Having won the Tour de France and supposedly won the Vuelta this year. I'll we'll have to wait and see whether Chris Froome gets done for doping on that or not. However, there's a few things I don't particularly like looking at this bike. And the first thing, in complete opposite to the Scott that we just looked at, I find this all a bit messy. You can see why they've done it like that, to make it more aero, I guess. But it just, I don't know, there isn't any continuity there for me. And there's a few bikes that do this. It's where they have a bit that sticks out further than the seat post. And I don't like looking at that. It, I think that looks weird. There's another bike in a sec which has done the same thing, which I'm going to look at in a moment. So that's the Pinarello. Next up, the Orbea Orca Aero M11i Team in bright orange. Nearly seven grand. I like this bike. I think this looks good. I think it looks modern. Slight shame about the cable still on show, but like the Scott, I think it's nice and tidy here. I think this looks real clean. Forks look really nice. This all looks great. So I like this bike. There's only one thing I'm not keen on, and it's this seat post thing again. I would much rather see it filled in. I know there's probably a bolt there or something to do up, but that to me looks way better. That looks, I just find that a bit weak looking. And it probably gives a bit more flex and it's more comfortable, but personally I prefer it like that. Just my opinion. But I like this bike. And what I really like about Orbea is they work hard with their photography and make their bikes look good. I love this photo of this Orbea and I have it as my desktop at the moment uh, because they've, they've just gone to a lot of trouble to take this picture. If I've got one slight tiny thing on this picture that bothers me and it's just a setup thing, I think I just find the saddle looks, it's, looks a bit like it's set too far back. 
that's my only comment. Apart from that, I think that looks great, and that makes me want to go and ride my bike. So well done, Orbea. Next up, this is a bit of a weird one. This is the Olympia Leader. I've never heard of Olympia, and I don't really like this bike, but I put it in because I've never seen it before and thought maybe it was worth looking at, purely for its weird headset. There's not many headsets out there like that. could almost use it as a teapot. And that's about all I know about Olympia, but they popped up on a site while I was doing a bit of research, so I thought I'd chuck it in. It's quite interesting little shape on the fork there, but I don't think that's going to win any looks competitions. Right then, next up, Merida Reacto Team E. Ooh, I quite like this. And that's exactly what I thought when I first had a look at these. And this is the new Reacto, because the old one I never liked, and they've kept a similar sort of frame shape, but it just looks better somehow. It's quite sort of uh, geometric, but nice and clean. Yeah, I quite like this. I'd like to ride that. I'm a little bit of a sucker for all the decals on it. Makes it look sporty to me. I don't know why they call it the Team E. Anything now with an E on it sounds like an electric bike. So I think that's a probably a silly thing for them to put an E on it. You can also get the disc version, which I think looks great too. Yeah, I'd like to have a go on that. Again, it would be nice to lose the cables. Okay, next up, weird one. It's the Look 795 Aerolite ZR, about five and a half grand. Now, I think Look are a French company. And I guess this is the f main thing that's going to catch your eye. And I can kind of see why they've done that, I guess. Do I like the look of it? No. Well, I don't think I do. It's a bit weird. quite like this part of the bike here. That's quite clean and sharp. This is all quite nice. I'm not keen on this cover or whatever it is they've got on the chain set there. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Sort of reminds me of Knight Rider kit car. So, yeah, interesting one, that one. Next up, a, another French bike, Lapierre. The Lapierre Air Code SL900 Ultimate FTJ. Obviously ridden by the FTJ Pro Team. And do I like the look of this bike? Not really, but I did quite like the, the shiny paint. Not that I'm sure I'd want a bike with shiny paint. I just thought it looked quite bling. But I don't really like this bit. I'm not mad keen on the... It's probably quite nice on aero, but I don't know. Yeah, not a mad, not mad keen on that. Next up, Giant Propel Advance SL Zero Disc, nine grand. I've talked about this one a lot in its blue colour scheme. I can see that it is a good looking bike, but I just I struggle to see past that colour scheme. So if you've seen any of my other videos on this, you'll know that I've made some other paint schemes, which I think if they offered better paint schemes, I think it would be in my in my top five. Here's some ones that I made: Castrol Martini, Red Bull and golf racing. I think any of those would look better than that yucky blue. Okay, so that's the Propel. Next, Fuji. Don't see many of these in the UK particularly, or well, not where I am anyway, but this one caught my eye, the Fuji SL 1.1. Super light, five and a half grand. I really like the look of this bike. It sort of reminds me a little bit of the tarmac, I guess but I'm a sucker for the white walls on the tyres. I just think that looks nice. So yeah, I like that one. They also make something called the Fuji Transonic 1.3, a little bit cheaper. Not quite so keen on this. They've got that sort of Pinarello thing going on with the sort of overbite on the forks, which I'm not mad keen on. The other thing that caught me out on this was the wheels are made by a company called Oval, because I was looking at this thinking, that's weird. How come the Fuji's got the Rovor? wheels on which are made by Specialized but of course they're not these are the oval wheels which I found a bit confusing there we go so that's the Fuji next up the felt AR FRD interesting I like it initially again we've got this interesting selection of shapes here that I'm not mad keen on I do like the, the big fat aerodynamic seat tube I think that looks quite cool so yeah looks a bit weedy there doesn't it that's sort of more modern bikes look a bit sort of chunkier there now right so that's all i've got to say about the felt and next up factor interesting one this one this is ridden by i think it's ag2r le mondial in the pro peloton yep official technical sponsors factor so it's an interesting bike this not sure about whether I like the look of it, but on the frame, you've got this interesting, I don't know what they call it, outside steerer or something like that, which as it turns, it's supposed to be more aerodynamic than having it within the head tube. So that's quite interesting. And then the big interesting one is the down tube is split in half. And when you initially see that, you think it's for aerodynamics, but on their website, they say that it's not, it's actually 
for stiffness but that it does actually help the air come off the front wheel and go through. So there we go. You can also buy that in the David Miller Chapter 3 Special Edition, which is a black colour. So there we go. Interesting seat on it. Might be the Brooks seat. have to check that. Cambium, which looks pretty cool. OK, so that's Factor. Next up, it's the De Rosa SK Pinifarina Nero Terra. I think I pronounced that ish right. And this is... Uh, this is a cool looking bike. Looks very aero, looks very aggressive. Kind of a bit messy at the front here. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. Very deep section wheels here that would be useless where I live, where it's all windy all the time. And in fact, De Rosa, or De Rosa, not sure how you pronounce that. This, I think, is a slightly older version because the new version, they don't have any side on photographs. They only have these sort of three quarter views. But it does come in some nice colours. If you don't fancy the black one. Quite like that. It's quite cool colour. Sort of matte finish. The white walls again. So that's pretty cool. The De Rosa. De Rosa. Next up, Colnago. And this is the C60, which is a lugged design. Pretty sure the lugs are carbon, as well as the tubes being carbon. And this comes in various bling colours, but this is my favourite one with the lightweight wheels on. I think this is a nice looking bike. I would definitely like to have a go on that. Colnago also make an aero bike called the Concept, which is this one, which is very flash looking. I can imagine if you owned a Lamborghini that you'd want one of these. And this comes in various colours as well. There's this sort of, looks like a custom painted one, which has got some very cool stuff going on on the handlebars. That's pretty bling, huh? And then this sort of light gradded blue version. So that's the concept. Am I a fan? Yeah, I think I like it. Not 100% sure about this sort of triangular bit here. So I don't really like that. And what bothered me a little bit when I looked at these photos was when they photographed this one, it looks like the forks aren't on properly. There's a big gap there. And the headset, I don't think, is fitted correctly there. So slight attention to detail missed, Mr. Carnago. So that's the Colnago concept and the C60. So for the next bike, it's fronted by quite a character. So imagine if you took the cockiness of Cav, added to that the physical prowess of Marcel Kittel, and then added to that the charismatic persona of Sagan. Back to 1989, what would you get? Well, no, not Marty McFly or Michael J. Fox. What you get is Mario Cipollini who was a very successful sprinter in the late 80s and 90s and was a bit of a character. Well, still is a bit of a character. And he now fronts a bike brand called Cipollini. And he doesn't mind starring in his own adverts, which I think is quite funny. The one. So he's a pretty cool dude. And I used to like watching him race. So the Cipollini RB1K, the one, is a, a pretty aggressive showy off type of bike as you'd expect from Cipollini very low at the front to get into a, an aggressive sprinting position I guess if you compare that to the Fuji look how lower it is at the front a lot lower and this comes in various guises you've got a two-tone grey one there naked black one you've got the Italian themed one Cipollini being Italian obviously and this fancy blue one not really my cup of tea they sort of lack a little bit of uh, finesse for me, they're a bit gaudy, just my opinion. So next up, Cervelo S5 ETAP. Now, I really want to like this bike, and I like the front end. I think this looks very clean, very modern. I think that looks lovely, all the way down to here. However, once we get to this bit at the back, I'm really not a fan. I think this seat post looks very odd, but what I find odd about this bike is just the very upright angle of the, of the seat tube here. Most bikes, so if we compare this to, say, the Venge, you see how it's practically at 90 degrees, the Cervelo seat post. And I find that a bit off-putting to look at, just not my cup of tea. Next, Canyon Aeroad CF SLX Disc 9 Limited. So I've made a few videos with this one starring in it. Yeah, it's a pretty good looking bike, but quite sort of understated. I've not got much to say about this that I haven't already said before. Nice and clean. Canyon always do good photography, just don't find it 
as exciting as some of the other bikes to look at. Let's leave it at that. So, next up, the Cannondale Super 6 Evo Black Ink. Expensive bike, this. 10,200. This is a double-edged sword for me, this, this bike. I do like it, but at the same time, I sort of feel it looks a bit old-fashioned. The frame is quite... it looks quite old-fashioned, the geometry. It sort of looks like... let's compare it to the tarmac, say. I think I'm so used to looking at a compact-ish type frame now that this... It sort of looks like the frame's too big to me. I think it's just because I'm so used to looking at more compact type geometry. So that's the Super 6. Next, BMC. This is the Rogue Machine. And I'm a big fan of this. That looks pretty funky to me. It looks modern. It looks clean. Love the white walls. Discs, obviously. This is the Rogue Machine, so it's slightly more endurance-based geometry. I like that. I like that a lot. Sticking with BMC, we've got the Team Machine, SLR01 Disc Team, 10 grand. Again, I like this for all the same reasons that I like the Road Machine. These are good looking bikes, I think, modern looking. So that's BMC. Next, Bianchi, the Altair XR4 Super Record EPS, 10,200. Again, a good looking bike, nice clean shut lines on the forks. And when you compare it to the BMC, it's a bit more shapely. So yep, yeah, a pretty good looking bike, the Bianchi. Next up, it's the BH G7 Pro Dura Ace Di2. Couldn't find a price for this. And the pictures on the website are really small, so they look very compressed, which is a shame. I don't understand bike manufacturers that don't put super crisp, beautiful images of their bikes on their websites. That just makes me think that they don't care enough. So I find that annoying, but it's an interesting looking bike. It's almost an in-between the Bianchi and the BMC, where they've taken the modern look and then the more curvy look and combined the two to get sort of geometric curviness. So, yep, quite like that. Next up, Argon 18, Nitrogen Pro, 9 grand. I quite like this, and then there's things that I really don't like about it, like this weird bit here. I'm super not keen on that. It looks like it's got a funny little hat on. Might be aero and what have you, but it does not look good. I like these brakes in the fork here. They've made a lot of effort there. Not sure what's going on here. It looks like it's dented, but I'm assuming that's just a, something to do with the photograph, but yeah. So that's the Argon 18 Nitrogen Pro. Sort of like it, but not 100%. And then last but not least, we've got ta -da, the 3T Strada, the bike everyone's talking about. Now this was designed by basically the guy who used to work for Cervelo, or even helped set up Cervelo. So you can obviously see the similarities there. And almost for that reason, I sort of feel kind of the same way about it. I want to like it. I love the fact that someone's trying something different with the one by. And I love how close the wheel is here to the, the down tube. So I think it's an exciting bike to watch out next season, see how it gets on. I really don't like that saddle. I don't know what saddle that is, but it looks like something your granddad should be riding on. So looks wise in this picture, and again, I don't know why, but 3T's pictures are very compressed, not very crisp, not very sharp. You'd sort of expect them to have some seriously good pictures on their website, but they don't. So to look at, not not a huge fan. Looks a bit odd to me. Okay, so that's all the bikes that I've trawled through and found. Um, so I need to put them in order of my favourites. And as I said at the beginning, this is just my opinion. And the great thing about bikes is that everybody has their own opinion and everybody should have their own opinion. So I've spent a lot of time looking at these. I've come up with this order. In ninth place, I've gone for the new Merida Reacto Disc. Team E. I think that looks pretty cool. Looking forward to seeing that next year in the Pro Peloton on the flatter races. In 8th position, I really like this Fuji SL 1.1, so I've put that in 8th position. I was quite surprised how much I like this one. In 7th position, I've put the Colnago C60 in the silver and graphite. I think this is a smart looking bike and sort of a fusion of old and new manufacturing. Pretty cool. Sixth place, gone for the De Rosa, or the De Rosa Pinifarina. This just screams a go fast, this bike. And like I say, I'd like to park that next to my Lamborghini. Fifth place, I really like this bike. I think Orbe have done a good job. Nice and clean, modern looking. I think it looks smart. Just that tiny little thing with the seat post there that bothers me. And then in fourth place, I've put the Team Machine from BMC. I think it's a cracking bike, this. And I think that's going to win a lot of races in 2018. So I've now got 
three bikes all in joint first place. I couldn't split them. Two of them won't come as a surprise. One of them, I think, is more of a surprise. It surprises me how much I liked it. But without further ado, in f joint first place, we've got the S-Works Venge Vias Disc Di2. That's just a crackingly good looking bike. And in joint first place, the S-Works Tarmac Ultra Light. Again, I can't fault this bike. Specialized clearly have guys that have a good feeling for what bikes should look like. And I think with these two bikes, they've just nailed it. And then controversially, joint first place, the BMC Road Machine 012. I just really like this bike and I like the way that it looks and it really makes me want to take it for a spin. So there we go. That's how I've ordered them. I'll be interested to see your comments below and what order you think they should go in. And just before I go, something else that I did just out of curiosity was I took every single one of those bikes that I've just looked at and in Photoshop I stacked them all together and ran a filter through so that every bike has the same value in the picture. And this is what you end up with. Many years ago I saw uh, an experiment where they took something like 50 people's faces and did this. They merged them all together and what you ended up with was like a, a very attractive generic human face. So along those lines this is what I've done with all those pictures of those bikes and if I then run another filter on it that just clarifies the lines a bit, this is what it comes up with. So this is an amalgamation of all those bikes we've just looked at. And if I zoom in, you can see all the different lines being made by all the different bikes. See the specialized logo there? I think that looks pretty cool. I think it also points out that when you photograph a bike, you should have the crank pointing in the same direction as the chain stay. So I think that that actually looks like a very well proportioned attractive bike. So there we go. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and my dream for this channel is for it to one day have enough viewers and followers that bike manufacturers actually come to me and ask me to try out and review their bikes. I would love to do that. So if you would click on the subscribe button which is this guy here with the silly hat on, which is another story which I will tell you about one day.